you will be using variables in your games to keep track of important information. Please keep in mind, computers only remember the things we ask them to. This is where variables come in. We can define variables in Construct2's event system to keep track of the data that is critical in our game. Variables in Construct2 can contain different types or kinds of data. A variable can store a number, a piece of text, or a so-called Boolean value. Boolean is just a fancy word for values that are either true or false. In addition to storing a particular type of data, each variable in Construct2 is of a particular type based primarily upon its scope. Scope is just a fancy word for where a variable can be used or is accessible. In Construct2, so-called global variables are accessible everywhere. Local variables can only be seen or used in the block they are defined. You can even create what's called an instance variable, which gives you the ability to store information relevant to an individual object you place in your game. Let's take a minute to talk about variables. You use variables to store information that you want to be able to use in your game. Computers aren't like us. They only remember what they're told to remember. So we need to assign values that are important to us to variables so that we can refer to them later. There are different types of variables in Construct2 based upon their so-called scope, where they can be used and accessed from. The most common type of variable that you'll be using is the global variable. But just remember, there's instance variables and local variables as well. So I'm gonna show you how to create a global variable just to get you started. We're gonna to go to our demo event sheet and we're gonna create a global variable by right-clicking, add global variable. And we're gonna continue on with this whole idea of ticks. We are going to call our global variable ticks. And remember, variables can store text, numbers, and in certain cases, Boolean values. And that just means true or false. So my initial value is going to be zero, and I'm going to give my global variable, a variable that can, see, can be seen everywhere, a description. Number of ticks that have occurred thus. You will see that there's a little globe next to your variable. You will see that the initial value is zero and the description is listed in this light green color. What we're gonna do, in addition to our uh, every tick grass platform raising action, we are gonna go ahead and increment or increase our global variable every time through to prove that the events, event sheets are being executed and evaluated every tick. So we're going to use the special system object type, and we are going to add two ticks, one, every time through our event sheet. The other thing we're going to do is I have a little text box in the upper left-hand corner of the layout. We are going to constantly update this text box with the value of our global variable, ticks. So what we're going to do, add action, choose our tick text object type and we're going to set its text and we're going to set it to whatever the value of our global variable is because remember ticks is storing how many ticks have happened and we can reference that this way let's go ahead and run this and let's see what happens we're also going to use the debug layout as you can see in the upper left hand corner that's how many ticks have elapsed. That should probably match what the system has. It looks like it does very closely. What I want you to remember is that if you go to system in your debug, you can go down and you can find all the different global variables that you have created for your game. And you will see them dynamically update here. Remember, global variables can be seen everywhere throughout the game, including other event sheets. There are also things called instance variables. For example, my coin object type has an instance variable created for it called checkpoint. And this is something I use to be able to implement checkpoints in the game. If I go to my layout, every individual coin could potentially have its own value for this checkpoint variable. That's why they call it an instance variable. Each instance can have its own value. 
So these coins have a checkpoint of one, and then this coin has a checkpoint of two. So that's an example of an instance variable, how you can store information relative to the individual object. And this can be very useful when creating different types of game functionality. Now, scope is extremely important. Instance variables only apply to that individual object. Global variables can be seen everywhere, but you can also have local variables. So if I go to my danger group and I add a variable there, doesn't matter what I call it, if I drag it into the group, you'll see that it changes from saying global to local. And instead of having the globe, it has the little map pin. So these local variables can only be accessed from their block level and lower. So outside of this particular block, no one could read or access, use in any way, variable one. And so that's the difference between a global and local variable. This ticks variable can be seen anywhere, down here, in some other event sheet, but variable one, our local one, can only be seen here and lower.